Hello, welcome to today's program entitled Wisdom of Senior Yogis. My name is Tom and I'm from London and I've been meditating for over 30 years. Today we have a very special guest with us who's been meditating for far longer, over 54 years, Sister Chandru, who is the director of Brahma Kumaris on the West Coast USA. So, first of all, I'd like to welcome you all to meet Sister Chandra. Welcome, Sister Chandra, to today's program. Thank you. And thank you so much for coming. And of course, today's topic is the Indian festival of Rakshabandhan and exactly what Rakshabandhan has to tell us for the West. The journey of spirituality, the interesting perspective of the East and exactly what Rakshabandhan can mean for us in the West. So, without further ado, Sister Chandru, please do tell us a little about the festival of Rakshabandhan and what exactly we can learn about this festival in the West. Rakshabandhan, very special for um, every Indian who grew up in India, who created this um, atmosphere of brotherhood and sisterhood. Basically, it is uh, once a year, uh, the festival comes around in August time and uh, it's a full moon and sister, biological sister ties to her biological brother a thread. And a thread is called Raksha and Bandhan is the mm -hmm. bond mm -hmm. of protection, Raksha mm -hmm. is the protection. So traditionally is that, now that's how nowadays is celebrated. Mm -hmm. So every home is the very special occasion because the purest relationship amongst all the relationship is with our siblings, our brothers and sisters. We grow up together and that innocence and that love, the selflessness, the little bit quarreling, little bit love, <laughs> playing together. So that brings in that little silky thread that in sh makes sure that yes, I am with you. So are we saying that in a way it represents forgiveness, understanding, compassion, acceptance, tolerance, unity, all of the wonderful values and meanings of spirituality. Then. Because it has legends behind it, the myths be behind it, scriptures, stories, mm -hmm. the history behind it, so much that um, makes lots of sense to it because it has a story of victory, story mm. of purity, story of protection. Mm. Um, because of all this understanding mm. and just uh, ritual itself uh, seals that mm. bond that yes, I am with you. Because meaning is that brother gives promise in return when sister ties the thread to so the brother's sister ties right the thread arm. to the brother yeah and then the brother isn't gives some exchange the, of gift also <laughs> yeah so gift is the brother gives tangible gifts okay. <laughs> sorry or very cash, monetary no. cash yeah and so it can be very popular <laughs> yeah it, the sister looks too. forward to it I tell you <laughs> and then uh, the brother gives also promise that I will take care okay. of okay. I will look after you. And so um, that's how sister feels secure, assured that yes, I'm loved and I'm taken care. The teachings of Brahma Gumaris taught me that we are all brothers and sisters and we are children of one God. Coming into the West, that yes, as you mentioned, th there's many, many different uh, beliefs and faiths um, across the USA across Europe and many countries. So you made this transition and for some passion, the passion to serve, the passion to, to, to help, to, to care, to love, um, to be very genuinely there for people. So despite the cultural changes, you still managed to uh, sustain yourself 
for such a long time. And this is because of the support system in the Brahma Kumaris, or this is because of your own practices of meditation and 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 wisdom and knowledge that you have. Tell us a little bit. Oh, what it is, before I tell to anybody else, I had to feel it in my heart, right. in my soul, that yes, we are all one family. And to experience that mm. and then relate to others. If I just tell you, you are my brother, with what relation? Mm. And when in India, culturally, we call everybody male members of community brother. Mm. But bai. In, yeah, brother bhai. Ben or bhai. Ben or bhai. But in Western culture, that's not the practice. Mm. Oh, I'm not your brother. So that was shocking for Sometimes me. Sometimes the opposite is. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm not your sister. Yeah. yeah, it can be taken the yeah, wrong way. Yeah, it was shocking in, in that sense. But when I really understood and practiced and felt, then I had no problem of relating others. So the identities, uh, the yeah, physical identities, male, female, yeah. um, young, right. old, this religion, that religion, this mm -hmm. faith, that faith. Mm -hmm. You were able to see through all of those mm -hmm. shells yeah. into the self, the soul. It's through the, the practice of my meditation, my soul consciousness, the the teachings that we use in a daily practice, that I am a soul, I am not body. And when you so, say soul consciousness, what, what exactly soul for our viewers, what does that Soul consciousness is that being, knowing myself, who I am really. Yeah, right. And so that we call soul consciousness. So mm. means I'm not a body. With yeah, yeah, reconnecting. I'm not body, I am a soul, sure. I'm a star, I'm a spirit. There is no difference of so all the same. color or caste or country or anything like that. So it becomes very easy that way you can, because it, how I can relate to you as my brother, you don't look like one. Mm. And so, but how I look, you and me look like, uh, same is a star, star here. Star. Yeah, the spirit is the sure. same. There is no color change. There is no country change. There is no religion idea. change. Is the same. It's a very beautiful notion. Yeah. But in practical practicality, um, how do we experience that? How do we get this sense of self? Because you know we have the therapeutic approach. We have the educational approach. You know we have the sociological the unity, the family. You know we have many different levels of reaching that sense of. Um, um, self-awareness um, and many spiritual practices. When you talk about the star, the self, the being, um, tell us a little bit about it's how you get It's not just that. a theory, it's practice. Right. Every morning I wake up and tell myself who I am. But you wake up very early, don't you? Yeah, we do. Then you reassure, re you remind right. yourself who you really are. If I, I identify I'm an Indian lady and came from this, this, and I'm different, no, I'm the same mm -hmm. like everybody else. So that mm -hmm. reassurance of myself and reminding myself and begin the day with that, then I So you're going relate. beyond the, I yeah. the physical identities, mm -hmm. you're going beyond the role, mom, yeah, sister, yeah, right. brother, right. auntie, mm -hmm. uncle, worker, job, driver, whatever the role is, you're going beyond that role. Yes. And then you're going deeper than that, though, from what you've said. So we're going beyond the feelings, beyond the thoughts, into a dimension of what? So that awareness, that practice made me accept in a Western culture, mm. all our brothers and sisters. Mm. And when then I take the Rakhi to them, they accept sure. with lots of regard and lots of love. Mm. And then that person next to his or her feelings passing on to that Feeling. Through the feelings. Yeah. So the the feelings. you're talking about yeah. the atmosphere changing yes, through the attitude. Right. right. Atmosphere so changes the notion of being together, the competition, jealousy, or helping my brother or mm. helping my sister in that matter becomes mm. easy. Mm. Because then I'm not your enemy or competitor. Mm. So that Raksha Bandhan brings so sure. much 
uh, of that into reality because the world we live in is not brotherly and sisterly mm -hmm. world. We are all very, very different. We, we speak differently, we eat differently, we walk, we do everything different and yet we cannot throw each other away because it's the same world, the same sky, same earth that we are standing on. So these teachings, the practice, awareness brought and the ritual makes it more profound. Mm -hmm. I do lots of interfaith work too and bringing all the religions together and going beyond all the differences of all the religions fundamental spiritually is all the same. <coughs> I believe in peace. Oh, Christian, I am believing in peace too. Then why are we fighting for? But why are we fighting? <laughs> why are we fighting for? <laughs> I mean, you know so much. You have yes, so much wisdom. Right. You're sharing that. Thank you so much for what you're sharing, by the way. Yeah. It's absolutely mm. interesting. And I'm sure the viewers mm -hmm. are sitting riveted, watching, mm -hmm. hanging on to your every word in relation to peace, in relation to unity, in, tr in relation to the meaning of Raki, integration, mm. acceptance, mm. love, all of these very important factors that we find we're struggling. People are struggling with these things. People are seeing, you know, we, are, are, we are identifying with each mm, other mm. as with so many levels of differences. But this People Raki are. brings us mm. together, it cuts through that. I, I believe if Raki is sent to every borders, every political houses, you know, like White House and all the parliaments and <laughs> in every school especially, so that makes difference. Mm. You don't need guns then. Mm. You don't need to kill each other because this is the bond of protection. Where is the protection then? Mm. Who we are protecting ourselves, mm. physically or spiritually? We're but killing this is a very good souls point, before, yeah. then we kill the bodies so because spirit is down, spirit mm. is dead. And mm. so we have to reawake that spirit and Raksha Bandhan, the, the, the thread of Raksha Bandhan does that job. So are you talking also about the reconnection with the self also, mm -hmm. not just in terms of the protection yes. of the family, of the social setting, yeah. but also the, the protection of self-awareness? Because that's who, who we are afraid of. Ourself. We're afraid of ourselves. Our self. evil, our own evil. Right. You, I'm not afraid of you. I'm afraid of my fear, my insecurity. And so if I have a, that firmness within, then I am not afraid. But how so, do we do that? Because we're surrounded by so much upheaval. We're, you know, we're, it, 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 we switch the news on. It's another problem, another issue. Um, many people on so many levels are working towards this, but how do we do, how do we achieve this sense of, you know, I'm okay, the world's not okay, mm. the situations aren't mm. okay, I can't do anything about A, B and C, but I can do something about myself. What happens what that um, I am immortal, that's what I learn from my I'm child. Immortal. I am immortal. I am beyond death. Right. I am beyond hurt. So I reassure myself. So you mean so you're not the body? Not, afraid, yeah, not, not the not body. The, this physical form. Body is going to die one day anyway, no matter how I'm protected, one way or the other, through the disease or whatever, accidents or... So then I am very sure I am always there. So then my neighbors can hurt me. My enemies, because I have no enemies, they cannot hurt me. So I am forever. Then wow. I'm not afraid. I travel all over the world by myself, in a strange country, you know, within a strange, uh, strange people, mm. the unknown people, no language, all that, because this reassurance of I am a spirit. So we're talking about mm. fearlessness. Yeah, that makes you comfortable and protect it. More than anything, earthquake happens. It's only a few seconds. But well, the fear are, of that, this is the thing. it people doesn't are, last yeah, long. People yeah. catastrophize, sabotage, right, right. They're, they're worried. Exactly. We don't know what's going to happen next. Yeah. And we get these news stories constantly bombarding the senses, the sounds, the images, 
So it's, isn't it natural that we're going to feel those things though? No, it, it happens only once. But, how do but we in get... our mind we mm. relive, we relive and we relive. So, so even truck passes by, we think it's uh, because I live in San Francisco. Mm. So we think it's earthquake. But it's not right. really. It's a truck mm. pass by mm. and shook your house. Mm. And so we relive in our mind. So we are afraid. We're creating so the, the catastrophic is, world we yeah. live in. Actually, sure. it's not. Sure. We are well protected right now. We are in a comfortable situation. We are talking. We are having a cup of coffee together. Mm. So that's not happening with me right now. Yeah, happening somewhere. We cannot deny it's not happening. It's happening but not right now. So mm -hmm. I no need to afraid. If I'm afraid, I'm sending that vibrations. But do um, tell us, how do we control the imagination? Because, you know, the mind, you know, is very active. We have so much information to take in. And it's, isn't it natural that we're going to sometimes think the worst of things and worry and adrenaline and rapid heartbeats and excessive thinking and overeating and self-medicating and all sorts of different types of behaviors which aren't very productive. Um, so are we saying here that we're somehow able to get a grip of the imagination, we're able to calm the self internally with this practice, um, to regain the self in some way? And how do we do that? It's with the practice. You don't have to afraid all the time. It's worry is not real. Worry is not real. Worry is not real. You it's imagined. It's imagination. Not fact. Your imagination yeah. that oh my God, what's going to happen? Well, that's you know? it. Yeah, that's what, what next. Yeah, it's and then next, instant yeah. reaction. Right. Instant yeah. adrenaline. So instant it's not real. It's not real. And we think that it's real, and that's the all well, all these problems, no worry, depression. Mm. All this happens because our imagination, mm. and then we become succumb to that, and then we face the consequences. So, so, so you're saying what sure, is the action yeah. of, of worrying yeah. and then are you saying that we're attracting that? We're we are attracting, that? we are attracting. It's really? not there really. It's not there because nothing we can do or change by worrying. So the another meaning of Raksha Bandhan tying, mm. the knot means the firmness. Firmness. The firmness. That knot is the firmness that I am not afraid, I am not worried. That's firmness to yourself. Mm. So it's a very significant the knot mm. that you tie with, with, mm. with that. And so you carry. It doesn't have to be Indian or Hindu or Christian or Western or the, it applies to everybody. Mm. I can do that. I have a firmness in me. I can tie the knot every morning every day, throughout the day, and then I remain protected. Then I am not attacked by worry or tension or fear or anything. So it, it brings lots of depth to ourselves, and then you're happy, you're walking along and because if car has to hit you, it will hit you, but you will not hit in your mind 10, 20 times. So. Fascinating. So we were talking um, about self-sabotaging, thoughts, feelings that we can't really do anything about. Circumstances are as they are. Could you tell us a little bit about the practice of being able to get some emotional distance from these kind of thoughts, the rapid thoughts, the feelings uh, and the imagination? How, how do we get some distance? A human being means feelings. If you don't have a feelings, you don't live. So how to get away from negative feelings? So we can't escape them. No, they are as they escape. are. No, but it's supposed to be there. Right. It's supposed to be there. The Raksha Bandhan is also the festival of feelings, mm. the brotherhood, togetherness, so, the family. That's how we live. So, with yeah. the family. Mm -hmm. with country, with religion. So that's what Raksha Bandhan is all about. And so if we don't have a feeling, we don't live. But if we have a good feeling, we have a good life. Mm. If we have a bad feeling, we have a bad life. So when we go away from bad feelings, 
But how can we do that? So you're in control only of way, that? The only way to do is to have a good feelings. Hmm. I cannot chase away bad feelings. But how do we control that? Uh, you can control by practicing. It's how you control your car. You are, Through the practice of you meditation. Are, you drive and drive and then you can talk and drive so at the same time because it's a practice. So we have to keep reminding ourselves, keep our knot of Raksha Bandhan tighten all the time, not only once a year, mm. but every time, mm. every day, every morning, we have to remind ourselves and tie our knot tightly so it doesn't become loose. So we don't have knots of feelings and yeah. thoughts and emotions, but we have the knot of determination yes. to ensure that yeah. we keep that yeah. space and we don't generate yeah. any more thoughts that we exactly. need to, yeah. and we keep things very simple and keep it in the moment. And through this practice of yours for many, many years, you're now in a position that you can manage many different things at once. You uh, use one good word is simple. Simple. Sure. We make life complicated mm. and we think life is complicated, situations are complicated, which is not. You have a way of seeing things in a different way, sure. in a straightforward way, in a simple way. And so when we have that simple way of looking at things, then we we are happy. When, when we make things complicated, one thing we do is waste of time, which we don't have more than 24 hours a day. Mm. And so if I make complicated situation, then I solve it and then I use it. How much time gone? Mm. But if I accept the way it is, then I am saving time and I am along the way to solve it and you and enjoy it about. Okay, so doctor said, oh, you got a cancer. How much time I have? How much, how long I will going to live? No, don't make it complicated. Accept it and start treatment. And then you get better, faster rather than going in a depression, worrying, all that, you know, so accepting it mm. that's also part of our positive feelings. Because I could be dead before even I die. So that's not the point. So Raksha Bandhan is also reminding me to be immortal, to forever. We are all together. Once I tied Rakhi, the thread, to 500 delegates of maybe more than 40 countries in Brazil in interfaith with all religions, all Muslims, Hindu, Buddhists, Christians, all kinds of Christians, and first they were reluctant. Mm -hmm. What is going on? And then we demonstrated he said, okay, two, three people, fine. But then everybody wanted to accept it. Mm. Okay, let's do it. Let's tie, let's show, let's demonstrate. Sometimes mm. talking or thinking or believing it, if you demonstrate, it mm. does more work. Mm. And so let's tie. And you're my brother forever, like that. So I'm not, at least those who 500 of them, tie each other, they were not going to become enemy. We are still friends. We meet often, you see, and still that sisterly feeling for me mm. personally that they have. So it's to demonstrate sometimes. That's why these rituals came into existence. It's, it's not that everybody is my enemy, mm. but to demonstrate you are my friend, mm. This Raksha Bandhan is very significant mm. ritual that I am showing you, mm. you are my brother, mm. you are my family, mm. we are one family of one God and that is how we are coming together and if we want to live, we live that way mm. and we are happy. So acceptance, change, keeping it simple, unity, 
togetherness mm -hmm. and happiness really happiness. is the is the is the real aim mm -hmm. um, sharing mm -hmm. and and having that experience together um, it's very touching it, what you've shared with us today is extremely mm -hmm. touching um, and very moving and I'm sure many of our viewers today will will think differently about the thoughts you know about the things you can do something about the things you can't do something about the difference between those things and um, and enabling people to to know that there are options yes and it's a beautiful it's mm. a really beautiful experience so to thank you so much mm -hmm. uh, for being with us today here and, and sharing your wisdom and I'm sure the viewers will be really enlightened um, by the many varieties of ways of understanding Rakshabandhan. So there you have it, um, a very interesting topic today, I'm sure you'll all agree, the Rakshabandhan, so keeping it simple, acceptance, understanding, tolerance, kindness, and really reflecting on what it really means to be reconnected with yourself. So thank you so much for watching our wonderful program today and we look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Thank you.